This is polyamory according to the King James Bible. On October 27, 2019, CBS News normalized polyamory similarly the way they have normalized boy drag queens on ABC's Good Morning America. It is estimated that 4 to 5% of people living in the United States are currently participating in what's known as consensual or ethical non-monogamy, a practice in which partners maintain more than one sexual or romantic relationship with each other's knowledge and consent. For comparison, that means non-monogamy is about as prevalent as the number of Americans who identify as LGBTQ, which is estimated to be about 4.5% of the American population. Now, let me cut to the chase. This is sin. Now that society has let the cat out of the bag with sodomite marriage, now anything goes. But Jesus always believed that marriage was between one man and one woman. And uh, you can find this in Matthew, the 19th chapter. You can find this in Mark, the 10th chapter. And Jesus is quoting Genesis 127. He's saying that so God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him male and female created he them. Now, God didn't create male and male or even male and two females. He created one male and one female for marriage, for life. Anything else is outside the perfect will of God. Let me give you some examples where a bigamy or polygamy or any other igamy relationship outside the marriage of a man or woman is sinful. Cain's descendants started polygamy. Uh, You can look in Genesis 4.19 and see that one of uh, usually the great grandson of Cain uh, named Lamech. Uh, he had two wives. Now, never mind the fact that in the New Testament, Cain is called that wicked one. All right. Pretty much all of Cain's offspring were wicked because they were all killed off in the flood. Only Seth's line continued on, and that was by way of Noah. Now, Abraham uh, had a woman outside of his marriage, and uh, her name was Hagar. And you can read about that in Genesis uh, 16. And as soon as Hagar conceived, her and Rachel, and it was Rachel's idea for Abraham to take Hagar uh, to wife and to have a child by her. As soon as Hagar conceived, they started having problems. Now, you mean to tell me that two women sharing a man can't get along? What? Uh, that, that's just amazing to me. Now, let's look at Abraham's grandson, Jacob. Uh, the same thing happened there. Uh, Jacob, according to Genesis 29th chapter, Uh, He loved Rachel more than he did Leah, his first wife. And they continually had competition and problems throughout the rest of the history of both of those uh, women, Leah and Rachel. There was competition. In the book of Judges, Gilead had a son by a woman outside of his marriage. And if you read Judges 11 around the second verse, you'll see that the, the, the sons of the wife, had issue with the son who was outside of that marriage. Once again, confusion caused by polyamory. In 1 Samuel, uh, the first chapter, there was a priest that had two wives, and one wife used to tease the other because one wife had children and the other wife didn't. You can read about that in 1 Samuel 1 and 6. And so there's examples after examples after examples where these multiple relationships just don't work. Now, King David lost four sons because of his polyamorous relationship. And you can read about this a little in 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter. Um, the God cursed him where the sword would never leave his house because of his, because of his adulterous relationship uh, with Bathsheba and the murdering of Bathsheba's uh, uh, husband. King David lost four sons over that. And then uh, the the one son that he had with uh, Bathsheba, Solomon, had problems with multiple wives too, according to 1 Kings 11. And he started worshiping idol gods and doing things that he shouldn't do, messing around with more than one woman. Now, God specifically said, don't multiply wives. He specifically said this in Deuteronomy 17, 17. He said, neither shall he multiply wives, talking about the king, to himself that his heart turned not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. 
All right. And you say, well, that's all Old Testament, uh, Old Testament. Uh, men had wives and multiple wives, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? The New Testament echoes the, the same thing as the Old Testament. If you look at First Timothy 3, 2, it gives the qualifications for a bishop and for uh, any church leadership. Uh, Titus 1 and 6, it says that uh, you must be the husband of one wife. And that includes uh, serial marriage. OK, you can't just uh, get married, divorce, get married, divorce, get married, divorce. Now, God can bless someone who has had multiple marriages. That was proven in the book of John where Jesus met the woman at the well. But I digress. That's a different story. The bottom line is, is that God doesn't want you to be uh, multiplying wives and having multiple marriages from the get go. The Bible says flee fornication this is all fornication anything outside the realm of one man and one woman is fornication and first corinthians 6 18 tells us to flee fornication and first corinthians 7 2 says the following it says nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband how much planning can the bible be how much planning can it get for you I mean, God killed 23,000 people over fornicating, according to 1 Corinthians 10 and, and 8. And then I believe that the actual event happened in the book of Numbers. I can't remember the, the chapter right now. But um, God has killed uh, 23,000 people over fornicating. Now, don't you think that God isn't going to judge this country uh, for all the fornication and all the promoting of polyamory and pederasty and I, I'm, I'd imagine bestiality is just around the corner because they're promoting everything else. Uh, I mean, this is terrible what we're seeing in this country. But look what uh, Jude 1 7 has to say about this. And I'll, and I'll call it done. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God's going to uh, avenge his word and he's going to avenge his power as a result of people being disobedient and going after polyamory and doing all of these wild freakish relationships. It's just not right. It's sin. And according to Jude 1, 7, God will deal with this ultimately.